Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Here's a super useful video that I've wanted to do for a real long time. It's all about the tons of Visual Studio shortcuts that I use all the time, which help me be extremely productive. Using all of these is definitely one big part of the reason why I managed to make my last game, Dinky Gardens, in just seven months. And I managed to do that despite being a very complex automation management game with hundreds of classes and tens of thousands of lines of code. The more efficient you are at using your tools, the faster you can iterate upon your ideas. So speed is definitely a very valuable thing. And in terms of game development, the faster you can make your game, the cheaper it will be, making it much easier to make profitable games. Now, this video is actually a lecture taken from my upcoming C Sharp Complete course, where you can learn everything from the absolute basics for beginners to more complex topics for advanced users. The course has some really nice bonuses with a ton of frequently asked questions. There's some fun quizzes and some really interesting interactive exercises to help you truly learn. I'm still hard at work on it, still have to record a bunch more lectures, still have to write a bunch more quizzes and build tons of interactive exercises. Hopefully, I will be able to get it all done before the end of February. You can sign up with the link in the description and I'll let you know when it's out. And if you want to learn specifically about Unity, then check out my Ultimate Unity Overview course covering 70 tools and features the engine has. Or for a guided path, check out my two free courses making a game step by step and then making it multiplayer. Okay, so let's learn about a ton of super useful shortcuts to help you massively increase your productivity. Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. In this lecture, we're going to learn about a bunch of really useful Visual Studio shortcuts. Okay, so as we get to the intermediate stage, it is really important to be good at using your tools. And as a programmer, your main tool is going to be your IDE, so you should be very comfortable with shortcuts and moving around in your code base. But also, this is something that you pick up with experience. So this lecture, this one is really not meant to be a step-by-step -step lecture, but rather, I just want to show you a bunch of shortcuts that I use myself, just so you are aware they exist. And over time, you will pick them up and they will become more and more natural. Okay, so the most basic, but honestly, most useful one is simply moving the cursor. Normally, beginners, they use the mouse to move around, so they scroll down and click wherever they want to write. And then sometimes, beginners use the arrow key and they press it like a million times in order to get wherever they want to go. Technically this works, but it's obviously not very efficient. There are many ways to speed this up, and importantly, many ways to navigate your code base without your fingers ever leaving the keyboard. For example, when moving left to right, technically you can indeed just press the right arrow key and eventually you will get there. But as you can see, going left to right like this takes quite a while. I gotta press like something like 50 times in order to get to the beginning or in the end. So one of the best super simple shortcuts is simply to hold down the control key. And now as you move left and right, yep, instead of going letter by letter, it goes word by word. So that way now I can get to the beginning or the end of this line in just about four or five presses instead of being like literally 50. So it is literally 10 times faster. Then of course you also have the home and end keys. I use these all the time, especially when combined with shift for quickly selecting something. So for example, if I want to move this line above this other line, if so, then usually what I do is press N to go to the end of this line, then hold shift and press up to select. And I'll press N and again in order to select just that one then i press ctrl x to cut i move up press ctrl v and yep like that so if you do it pretty quickly it goes quite fast very easy to do all this and again i did all of that without ever my fingers leaving the keyboard if i were to use the mouse i would have to select like this ctrl x go like this like this so in this case not much of a speed difference but just the fact that your fingers never have to leave the keyboard that alone is a huge bonus and again on all these shortcuts we're going to see how difference is usually pretty small like saving like a second five seconds or fractions of a second so that does sound like a super tiny amount but considering how you're probably going to be programming for many years and you're going to write millions of lines of code throughout your entire life when you look at it like that those tiny amounts of time they really add up so that's the main thing just moving left and right holding control to go between each word or using end and home in order to go back to the beginning and the end and combining all of that with shift in order to really move around super quickly so that's the first tip and then for something that is sadly not default is moving the cursor up and down so by default if you do that it obviously only only moves one line at a time. So again, the same thing in order to move down 20 or 30 lines, it actually takes quite a lot of pressing in order to move. And by default, the alternative is using page up or page down. Although personally, I'm not a big fan of this. I find that these move the cursor way too much. So every time I press page down, it takes me quite a while to realize where the cursor is and how much actually moved. So I don't like how this moves way too much. So in my code, I added something so that I can move the cursor up and down vertically by just five lines. That way I can very easily go down and continue scrolling down and I'm never lost because the screen never changes a massive amount. I'm always moving down, moving up, select this line of code, do something, move down, write something and so on. 
Now, sadly, this behavior isn't available by default in Visual Studio, at least not that I know of. So for this, I installed this extension called Visual Commander. This one lets you basically apply some hotkeys to literally anything you can do in Visual Studio. And then with that installed, just go up here into extensions and here is the V command. And on this one, here are some commands that I made. So here is the window. So I've got move up and move down. So I can edit in order to see what this is doing. And yep, it is executing the command line up. So literally just moves the line up. And the other one, this one does the same thing, but line down. So I've got these two commands. Here, if I have the cursor somewhere and I go into that extension and I use the move up command, yep, it does move up by six lines. So then, as you can see, I just assigned some keyboard shortcuts to those. So control up and control down. Then I just went into tools, options, and over here, go down into the keyboard shortcuts and then find VS command. And up here, command one, command two, those are the two ones that I made. And as you can see, I have assigned them to control up arrow and control down arrow. So with all that, if I press control up or control down, as you can see, the cursor moves quite a lot faster. So I find this to be much better than just pressing one, just moves one line or pressing page up, which always caused me to lose and get lost. So with just these steps, you can see how I can move in the code really fast without ever touching the mouse. Like, let's say I want to go down. I want to find, for example, the awake. I want to select the awake. I want to cut it and paste it down here. And there you go, just like this and remove these lines, format and so on. So as you can see, just using these control in order to move between the words, using this shortcut in order to move vertically really fast and combined with home and end and with shift and all that, put all those together and yep, you can move through the cursor. You can move in your code base really quickly without ever leaving the keyboard. Then of course, if you're working on some kind of big file, like for example, this is the player class from my Steam game, Dinky Gardens. So this is a pretty massive class. For this one, if I want to get to the bottom and if I go even with this short, this is going to take quite a while. So for that one, if you want to move a massive amount, you can use control home or control N in order to go to the beginning or the end of the file. So this is yet another way to very quickly move around. Another very useful one for moving around is simply put the cursor on top of some kind of symbol. Like for example, let's say this one, this event on player picked up the experience. And then if we press control shift and either up or down, this will move the cursor to the next or previous reference of that symbol. So for example, over here, you can see how it's really useful, how in this huge line of code, this script has almost a thousand lines of code, but I can very easily see exactly where this one is being referenced. I just move up and down. And yep, here's the definition and here is what I'm using. So whenever you want to see all the various places in which you are using some kind of symbol that can be a function, can be an event, can be a variable, can be literally anything. Just hold down control shift and then up and down and you can see all the places in which that symbol is being used. Then another extremely useful shortcut that I use all the time is control and comma. This one pops out this window and now here you can search for any class. You just type a name and find it. Like for example, I want to open up the dinky class. So I'm going to type in dinky and now just one thing is this shows actually every symbol. So in this case, in this game, since it's all about dinkies, I've got tons of references to dinkies. So you can see all of these in lowercase. I usually write my variables in lowercase, so I know that's not the one. I know the one that I want in order to open the file is the actual file itself. So I can type in dinky.cs and yep, that does show the file. Press enter and yep, here I am in the dinky file. And again, press control home to get the beginning. Yep, here's the dinky definition and I can see all this code just like this. So if I want to move to like the tutorial manager, so I just write tutorial manager, just write a little bit and yep, I can already see this one. So this is the class. We can also see the icon over there. So that one means a field, that one means a class. This one means an event and so on. So I can see this one, press enter. And yep, here I am in this one. And again, move up, move down, everything works. Again, note how throughout all of this, my fingers never leave the keyboard. I never touch the mouse. So personally, whenever I'm making my games and I want to open another class, I never go into Unity and manually double click on that file. I always do it over here. Press control and comma, search for anything, press enter and it opens. Or alternatively, for example, that one that I mentioned when you got tons of references to something like over here, tons of references to a dinky. So I can just go into this one and then I can put the cursor on top of the type itself and I press on F12 and if this one takes me to the class definition. F12 is a shortcut, but if you want to use the mouse, you can also just right click on it. And over here we can see, yep, F12 is indeed a shortcut to go to definition. Now, since we're here with the mouse, one really useful one is over here, the find all references. When you click on this, this is going to show all of the references to that type. So this can work with whatever is under the cursor. So in this case, I select the dinky class. So this is going to show me all of the places in my entire code base where the dinky class is being used. Or alternatively, you can put it just on a field. And yep, now this one is going to show all the places and you can click in order to automatically go to that line. And of course, it also works with functions. So for example, over here, this function, I'm pressing control shift up and down in order to see all the references within this file, but this function is not called from within this file. So in order to find where on earth am I calling this again, right click, go to references. And yep, I can see, okay, so it's being called from this script right here inside the dinky manager, it's calling this function. 
Another really useful use case for that particular one is when working with interface. So let's say I want to see all the classes that implement this interface. Again, right click, find all references. And if I can see all of these, look at these, these are all implementing the iInteractable interface. Then something that I use all the time is control RR. That is the shortcut for renaming the current symbol. So I just place the cursor, for example, over here on top of the is moving field, press control RR. And now let's say I want this to be a little bit more descriptive. So is player moving. So I change that and note how, again, the other shortcut, control shift and up and down. Note how this one did rename every single reference of this symbol. So all of those, I don't need to change them, just modify them once, use the rename feature and automatically renames all of them. And if I find out that the previous one works better, again, just edit, go ahead, remove this, press enter, and if there you go, all of those have now been renamed. Remember that refactoring is an extremely important, and importantly, it's a perfectly normal part of the process. In fact, the next lecture is entirely dedicated to the topic of refactoring. If there is something that you wrote some name, but then later on you think it should have a better name, just take some time in order to rename it. Simply place the cursor over it, press Ctrl RR, write the new name, and it will automatically rename every instance of that symbol. This works on everything, everything from simple variables to even entire classes, and it even renames every single reference in your entire code base. So for example, here I am on the Dinky class, which is used throughout the entirety of this code base. I can press Ctrl R R and I can modify this whole thing and say something. And yep, like it says here, rename will update 297 references in 58 files. So this rename feature is really awesome, really useful. It automatically handles modifying everything and everything is handled automatically for you. Then when you have multiple windows open for moving between them, you can use control tab. If you just use one, it goes back and forth between the last open tab. So this is something that I use all the time whenever I'm working between two files and I want to quickly move between them. But instead of doing just that and letting go, you can hold down control and tab. And as long as you hold down control, you can see this window. And over here, you can move up or down in order to move between all the various windows that you have open. So for example, let's say I want to go into the dinky off world. If there you go, now I'm looking at this class. And if I quickly control tab, I go back into the previous class. And this tab over here, this one only works for the windows that are open. So again, the same thing. If you want to open up a new window, just press control comma, open the window. Let's say, for example, I want to find the carry vehicle. So I just type in the carry vehicle. Yep, it's right here, control enter. And this one opens up the carry vehicle class. Now control tab and off on, I go back to the dinky and move between them like that. Then here's a really simple one. You can raise an entire line by just having the cursor anywhere on that line and pressing control X. That one cuts the entire line. That one acts as a cut, meaning if you press control V, you get the line back. Alternatively, for duplicating, you can press Ctrl D. Although honestly, I rarely ever use this one because I can never remember whether it's going to duplicate on the line above or below it. So usually if I want to duplicate something, I just do the shortcuts that I mentioned a while ago. So and above and cut, move, cut, and so on. Now, speaking of copy paste, if you press Ctrl Shift and V, if you do that, you get a list of your clipboard history. So for example, a while ago, I showed cutting the away class and yep, it is still saved in here. So if I press on enter, yep, it pastes that one exactly like that. So remember that your clipboard has history. It is not just the last thing that you copy. You can access the entire history. Another useful tiny time saver is actually when using the mouse. When using that, if you want to select some kind of word, some kind of symbol, obviously you can do the basic thing, which is just click and hold and drag throughout to select it. So obviously that works, but it's a little bit fiddly. If you move up or down, it can be quite tricky. So the similar shortcut for that, whenever you want to select some kind of word, you can just double click and it selects it. Or alternatively, hold down control and click in order to select the entire thing. This can be quite useful, for example, when you have some copy paste code and you want to change some kind of name, but for some reason the rename function doesn't work. Like for example, let's say I want to duplicate this code over here. So right now I cannot use the rename because this one is going to conflict with that one. So instead, let's say the active dinky list. So I press, I select this one, control click, and there you go like that. And if I want like that. So control click in order to do control V and so on, this one can be quite useful sometimes. Then something that I only very rarely use is shift and alt, hold those and then move up or down. And this one basically lets you select multiple lines of code and edit them at the same time. Like I said, I rarely use this, but sometimes can be useful, for example, for quickly appending or removing some kind of prefix. Like for example, on this enum, I've got these values. I want to write all of them and say tier one, tier two, and so on. So I can select all lines and write tier and writes on all of them. Or alternatively, if this one did have it and I want to remove them, just select them all and I can remove them. So basically you can write code on multiple lines at the same time. And if you want to quit this, just press escape and yep, back into a single cursor. Another super useful one is when working with events, like for example, the on any dinky started starving. So I can just write the event name 
then plus equals. And then here Visual Studio automatically has a shortcut. So you can press tab to insert. Then if you want, you can rename it. But usually I keep the exact same name that it suggests. So just press enter and yep, there you go. I've got a new event. Now I can come here and again, use the shortcut control X to get rid of that. Go above, go to the end, press enter, go to new line, then write some new code. So you're really useful. And if you, afterwards you decide that you want a better name for this event, again, remember just a quick control RR in order to rename. Then if you want to find something, of course you have control F. For example, finding when I'm invoking some kind of event, so just write invoke, and if it finds it, obviously normal. Then the shortcut for going to the next element, that one is pressing on F3, and it goes to the next one, so it finds that one, that one, that one, and so on. In order to go to the previous one, you use Shift F3, and it goes backwards. Also, by the way, this works whether the Control F window is open over there, but if I press on S in order to close down that window, and with this, if I press on F3, yep, it still remembers the last thing that I searched. Then for quickly commenting or uncommenting something, you can do Control K C, and yep, it automatically comments that entire line and if you have multiple lines selected control kc and yep automatically comments and the opposite to uncomment is control ku and yep automatically uncomments them Although personally, I never really use this one myself. Again, it goes back to how I'm so proficient at just moving the cursor. So if I just want to comment on these, I just do the comment star, go down there, comment star, there you go, just like this. Another useful shortcut is extract method. So you can select a whole bunch of code, then press control R and M. And this one creates a new method with that code. So let's say setup. And if there you go, it pretty much took that code and placed it in its own method. So this can sometimes be useful. Although again, this is another one that I don't really use myself because again, I'm pretty fast at just moving the cursor. So if I want to do this kind of thing. I really just go into the code that I want. I just go, I use, I move the cursor, move up, move down, then do private void my setup do some kind of function, then write it just like this, and everything works. If you want to go to a certain line, you can press Control and G. This one lets you input some kind of line number. So let's say, let's see, what is that line 500? So just type in 500, and yep, there you go. Here we are on line 500. Now for this one, normally I don't really use it when writing code, but I do use this one quite a lot when writing the text script for my courses. Since normally I write my course in a simple text file, sometimes it has tens of thousands of lines. So for that, usually I like to move around by using the line number. Although in the code, I never really have such massive files, so I don't normally tend to use it, but it's still a nice thing to know. Then of course, the one that you already know, if you make some kind of mistake, Control Z in order to undo. And one you might not know is Control Shift Z in order to redo. Then for moving between Visual Studio and Unity, just a simple Alt Tab. So just once and moves, or if you have multiple files, just keep pressing Tab. And perhaps the simplest and most useful one is simply auto complete. I really advise you to get comfortable with how autocomplete works. Learn how to just type a few lectures and then either press enter or dot or semicolon in order to quickly autocomplete. Honestly, I don't remember the last time there were something like, for example, try get component. I just try a little bit and write like that. For example, dinky, just like this, then out dinky, dinky, just like this, super simple. So just get used with how little you have to write in order to press enter in order to automatically write everything else. This works with fields, but obviously it also works with things like functions. It works with classes. It works with literally anything. Okay, so that was a lot of shortcuts. Personally, I use a lot of these all the time, but again, I've been writing code for over 25 years. If you're not used to using shortcuts, then I really don't expect you to suddenly use all of these right away all at once. Like I said, this lecture, this one is really not meant to be a step-by-step -step lecture. For the most part right now, I just want you to memorize the first ones that I mentioned about how to move through the cursor quickly. Just memorize those and simply remember that the other ones exist. Then periodically, come back to this lecture every once in a while and watch it again. If you do that several times over the next few months, then soon enough, all of these shortcuts that I mentioned, all of these will be natural to you, just like they are to me. All right, so that was a lecture taken from my upcoming C-Sharp course. I really hope you found it useful. You can sign up to be notified when the course is out with the link in the description. It will teach you everything about C-Sharp, starting from the absolute basics to some more advanced topics. So regardless of your skill level, I am certain you will learn something new. All right, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.